Uh, did we had a, uh, this is Rowan. Rowan. And there's a reason I repeated my name. Rowan. I always say it. I say it the way it's supposed to. And a few days ago, seriously? A few days ago, somebody was seriously gaslighting me in the, uh, in my, uh, Instagram inbox, and I don't say this lightly, I mean, like, genuinely, like, like we're talking the film based off the play, um, method of gaslighting, uh, wherein they are insisting that what I know is true is somehow false. And so, if you haven't seen the, uh, the film or the play Gaslight, it is it is the origin of the term, and it is about a woman in an abusive relationship. I forget if they were uh, if they were married or not, or if it was um, another sort of arrangement. Um, but uh, but yeah, so uh, so yeah, the uh, the the her uh, her male partner. Um, 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 uh, would, uh, would have this, uh, would have this, uh, this gas light turn on in this window at about, you know, certain times of the day, and she would see it, and, but him and an accomplice, a couple of them, um, perhaps, um, would insist that they don't see this light that's turning on, and, you know, at these specific times of the day, and so, uh, and the goal was to make her feel like she was crazy so that, you know, they could, uh, um, put her in a, uh, in a, in a, uh, sanit sanatorium, no, um, Put her in the put her in the in the uh, in the psychiatric facility. Sanitarium, yeah, sanitarium. Sanatorium was a uh, uh, like uh, Kellogg's old health spa, but um, but yeah. So then what happened was um, so yeah, uh, and the goal was to like I said um make her feel like she was losing her mind so that she'd go into the, um, mental, <clears throat> mental hospital and, uh, basically they would have control over her money. And so, uh, so yeah, this person was trying to convince me that I say my name improperly. And I still find myself in this last few days saying my name out loud to myself and you know just just to see if I am indeed doing it the way I know I'm doing it and I asked at least three different people that same day and I put the uh, and I posted screen caps to my Instagram story so you know it's all like hidden now but um but yeah, I, uh, I, um, what I do, yeah, I, I, I put the, uh, um, so yeah, like, this is, this is something that, seriously, it's like, and, you know, it's one of those things where, like, I know, like, nobody has to tell me that I have, at best, a beginner's grasp of the... Irish language, like, nobody needs to tell me that twice. I, I, I'm learning something, okay? And if, and 
if you think you know, if you think you speak it better than I do, well, kudos to you, that's great, but, um, here's some advice, like, if you, if, and this isn't the only time somebody has gotten on my case over my beginner's grasp of the Irish language, and it's just, it's like, like, what, what do people think, you know, is, is going to do the most good here, like, it's, uh, like, there's a reason that outside the, uh, outside the Cleltach, um, regions in Ireland that, uh, uh, they, they, um, there's, uh, there's mandatory lessons in it, which I'm told, like, you know, most people pretty much forget right after they finish school, which, which really, uh, makes me, uh, it, it just, it just really rubs me wrong when people start getting on me about that, because, you know, like I said, it's, it's one of those things, it's like, um, I believe it all started in the 70s that they, uh, that they put in this, uh, this mandatory, um, thing for, um, um, reintroducing the language to school children outside the, outside the Gleltach, um, regions, and, um, and then what happens is, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, so, uh, but, uh, but, it, it, but if you're going to be getting on me about it, first off, like, like, uh, oh, right, and the reason, the reason that they, that they, that they, um, 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 uh, started doing this is because, uh, it's, it's, it's considered an endangered language, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of reasons for this, a lot of which have to do with colonialism. There was a there's a sizable period where it was literally illegal to speak uh, Gaelic in Ireland due to uh, due to um, 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 British rule over the entire island until 1928, and so. Uh, and that's another thing. It's like this. This person's like, oh, so that's why you. That's why you talk like a retard, because, because your your grandfather's from from Northern Ireland. That's the UK. I'm like, yeah, but he emigrated with his parents in like, ah, uh, like 1920 or something. <clears throat> the the man, my grandfather, my grandfather. So I'm pushing 40 myself. My own father was pushing 40 when I was born. In fact, I'm about the same age as my father was when I was born right now. So. That's, uh, that's something. Hopefully I live longer than he did. But that's another story for another time. So, um, so then what was I saying? Um, it's like, my grandfather, so my paternal grandfather, and he is actually a little bit older than I thought. So he emigrated with his parents in 1920. So that was when pretty much the entire goddamn island was still British, as in under British rule. So, you know, don't, don't get on my ass about, about shit. And no, it doesn't make any sense, because like I said, he was, you know, I'm named after my, um, my, um, my paternal grandfather's, uh, younger brother who died of scarlet fever when he was maybe 10 years old. So he was born 1910, and they emigrated around 1920, and, and yeah, it's like, I'm just, and I say my name, and, and this person, like, like, they were trying to convince me that I say it like Roan, R-O-A-N, like, like, only one syllable, and I'm like, no, Roan, I say it Roan all the time, and I'm asking people, I'm asking friends of mine, including people who don't even have a horse in this race, like, like, oh god, one of my exes that, 
a couple of my exes, actually, you know, that I'm still on speaking terms with, not the, not Captain Slappy, of course, and, uh, and I asked my friend Angela, and a couple other people, oh wait, no, um, uh, Emily was, uh, uh, she was responding to the, uh, the Instagram story, and, um, and so is Chelsea, but yeah, I, 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 several people, several people, people I didn't even, um, ask about this, were responding to my Instagram story, um, assuring me that, no, I'm not crazy, my, I do say my name audibly with two syllables, like, like, this and see, here's the thing, is like, this, this latest person who's getting on me about my, uh, about my at best beginner's grasp of the Irish language is like, first off, I, I mean, she, she even, like, insists, and I'm saying she, because, um, username went that way, or at least suggested such, um, you know, she's, she's getting on me, like, even, even pointing out that she herself is not in, in the Quail Tuck region, and, you know, and doesn't speak it daily, and, you know, to which I am really curious, like, what, uh, like, and see, at, at, at that point, when, when you're saying that you don't even speak it daily, then my question is, so please demonstrate to me how you speak it better than I do. Because here's the thing, is like, okay, I'm, I'm learning as an adult, which, yeah, is debatably a little more difficult than uh, learning more than one language as a child. And there are some, uh, some, um, there are some pretty strong hypotheses about this, and, uh, but most of them rest on the notion that the, um, the portion of the brain that specifically deals with language, uh, physically matures by a certain age, and, um, and when that happens, it, uh, you know, it, it can make, uh, learning new things that are controlled by that cortex a little bit more difficult. It doesn't make them impossible, it just means, you know, um, you need to try, uh, well, yeah, it's like, uh, 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 okay, so I grew up in Metro Detroit, so I'm used to, uh, and, uh, so, like, I, I, and I grew up in a predominantly African-American neighborhood in Metro Detroit as well, uh, so I've heard the, uh, I've heard the phrase, you gotta be, you gotta prove, you gotta try twice as hard to prove you're only half as good. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, that has a very, um, that has a very loaded context coming from, like I said, where the neighborhood I grew up in, and that is fine. And I'm not saying that's at all the same thing, but I'm saying uh, that is a really easy, um, that's a really easy phrase to put it, you know, to, to, uh, to describe um, learning a language as an adult um, and how that can work out. That, you know, it feels like, you know, you're, you're trying and trying and trying, and you're doing everything within your power and, um, and that's all well and good and everything, but at the end of the day, you're always, y you know, y y you end up feeling like, what the hell was this even for? But, um, at least in my case, I know that I'm doing it for, for myself, basically. I, I've wanted to for a long time. It was out of my reach all through childhood and adolescence and um, and more specifically and it was kind of out of my reach in my 20s so whatever you know as as I as I once said in making a one of those little like motivational quotes <laughs> In, uh, 
in some program for uh, um, you know designed to uh, put things together like like do like those little text images for Instagram. Uh, it's like um, as long as you're not dead, you can still do the thing. And if you do die, if your widow as a necromancer, you can probably still do the thing. And the reason I wrote that up and wanted to make a little inspirational quote about it is because, you know, it's true. As long as you're not dead yet, you can still do what... You can still do it. You can still do it. Are you going to be great at it? Probably not. But will you enjoy doing it? That's that's what matters, is that you're doing what you do, you're doing what you want to, hopefully it's not going to hurt anybody, and most importantly, you're enjoying your life while you do it. And that's, at the end of the day, when you're doing something, especially as an adult, especially as an old fart like myself, do you enjoy doing the thing? And if your answer is yes, then keep doing the thing. Just, just keep doing, it. keep making the best possible efforts that you can, and hopefully it works out. And if it doesn't work out 100%, it worked out as well as you could have done it. That's, that's the thing. That's, ah. Uh, but yeah, this, uh, yeah, I, and, but yeah, like, they couldn't even demonstrate to me that they could speak it any better than I do, which kind of makes, I mean, that, I mean, between that and literally gaslighting me, like, in, in the original sense of the term, like, like, telling me that something I know is true somehow isn't, you know? Especially when there are people backing me up on this, <laughs> right? I know how to say my name. I know how to say my name. And it kind of reminded me of this scene in a movie that I really, really liked. Um, in fact, I liked it enough that when, um, oh, I think this was, a, this was from a blockbuster, that when the blockbuster, um, the, uh, the last one in the area... It's, uh, if you're from the Ann Arbor Ypsilanti area, I'm talking about, uh, so you know where the, uh, the Round Tree Shopping Center, where the Walmart and everything is, um, right toward the front, I, I don't know what it is now, but I know there's that little strip out in front, and one of, um, one of the things in that strip is a Coney Island, I believe, that, uh, that does a, like, a fish fry on Fridays, and there's something else, I think there's a smoke shop in there, as well, or maybe it's a vape shop, I don't know, but it's the, it's the store way on the, uh, if you're looking from the street, it's going to be on the far left-hand side, that used to be a blockbuster. I don't know what it is now, but, yeah, I picked this up from there, uh, when the blockbuster was closing up, and, uh, and then what happened, and then they had, like, a lot of DVDs for under five dollars, so I picked this up, oh god, no, this was years ago, so this might have, yeah, this probably was as little as, like, two or three bucks when I got it. Um, and this is the opposite of sex. And the reason it reminded me of this is because, um... Um, 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 there's a... There's a scene in here... Um, with, uh, with Lisa Kudrow's character, um, Lucia. And, um, she... It's written as, uh, Lucia, L-U-C-I-A. And there's this, uh, there's this, um, there's a, there's a, first, first there's a, there's a, um, there's a scene in here where she's describing why she pronounces her name Lucia, and it's because she has a sister named Marsha, and another one that I'm forgetting, um, but M-A-R-C-I-A says Marsha, and another name something, 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 C-I-A spells something that ends in Sha. And so she, uh, she decided to pronounce her name, uh, Lucia rather than Lucia. You know, so that way she, uh, she went with her sisters. And then later in the film, 
that, uh, that, that comes up again where she's on the phone with somebody and she's like saying, yeah, it's pronounced Lucia. No, I know how my name is pronounced. Thank you. <laughs> And, um, and yeah, it's, I don't know, it's an enjoyable movie. It's been a while since I've seen it. I, I don't know, maybe I should go through my DVDs in addition to the books. I'm doing a, I'm going through the books, I'm going through my books, uh, sometime in the next week or so. I, uh, ideally before the 11th of June, when is the next, uh, um, um, um what's that thing called? This is the thing, uh, the Witch's Night Out at Crazy Wisdom. Ah, uh, so, um, hopefully before then I'll go through all of my books. I do this around the solstices for, um, well, a number of reasons. First and foremost being that I, um, I what? I have a problem with the, um, the little, the, the little free library things. There's like a dozen of them in this area, and I know where all of them are, and if I'm ever in the vicinity of one of them for any reason, I I have to I have to talk myself out of making a beeline to the LFL that's like even a couple of blocks away. It's like no 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 I gotta go do this. There is this thing that needs to be done, and I need to go do it. And, um, so yeah, I have to, I have to talk myself out of going to do it, and I have to talk myself out of going to the LFL and picking up free books, and of course both the libraries, they have, um, they have these shelves of, like, free books, free to good home, and all of that, and I have a problem with, uh, when, when free books are involved, and so I, I have a problem where I like to go to the source of the free books and take home anything that looks even vaguely interesting. And if it looks even vaguely interesting, it's probably going to come home with me. I've started putting limits on myself on how many I'm allowed to take home at any one time because one time, I'm not kidding, I brought home a good dozen books. And, um, and then what happens is so, um, well, starting last year, um, I did it once in June, I believe, of last year, and then I did it the last time in January, so yeah, this is gonna be, like, the, the, the first anniversary of this, and a couple of people were, uh, voicing some kind of interest in looking at what kind of books I'm gonna be, um, dumping off, um, anything that might be of interest to the, uh, to the, uh, and this is why I brought up the, uh, Witch's Night Out. Anything that might be of interest to the, um, um, Witch's Night meetup at Crazy Wisdom, uh, I kind of, like, I'm like, okay, I, I'll take that there, uh, and dump it off there, cause, um, cause my friend Mora, who, uh, she's, uh, she's one of the people with the, um, uh, she's one of the moderators of the Facebook group that is associated with the meetup, so, uh, and she, um, and she brings this, uh, this, this little cart of books, uh, every month now, and she's been doing this, like, for the last, like, three or four months, oh, god, four or five months, yeah, she's been doing this, yeah, since about, um, uh, December or January, shit, uh, so yeah, she's been doing that, and so, um, so yeah, anything that might be of interest to the, uh, to the pagan group, I, you know, kind of gets priority to go there, but everything else, um, that I have no reason to want to keep, and I make three piles every time, well, stacks, whatever, um, so I make about three stacks every time. One is books I am almost certainly never going to read because it just seemed like a good idea at the time. The other stack is, um, is books that I may or may not read. So that's a maybe pile. And this, uh, this June, so next week, uh, it's clear on the other side of the coffee table and I don't feel like getting up for it right now, but this, this, uh, this coming 
this coming June is going to be the first time I'm going to um, start a, start marking those books with sticky notes so that I know which ones are, um, are, uh, that I really got to think about, like, am I really going to read this, like, you know, in six months time, you know, like, think about, it. like, even if I'm not planning to read it in six months, it's like, um, do I plan to read it ever? Like, you know, so, yeah, that, uh, so I'm gonna start marking those with, like, you know, just a sticky note, like, up at the top or something before I put it back on the shelf or whatever. And then there's the stack, and these almost never actually leave the shelves. Uh, things that, for some reason, I am definitely going to keep, um, for at the very least another six months, and that, you know, um, whether it's something I definitely intend to read, if not for the first time, then again, or it's something that I've got just for bragging rights. Uh, I've got a couple of really weird things, and I don't even know how I got some of them, but... But, um... Uh, uh, or then there's, like, uh... Well, there's that old, uh, old, um... Oh god, well over a year ago now, I posted this, uh, this, uh, this, this, uh, this haul video from the, uh, from the free bookshelf of, um, of books that I got from the free bookshelf at the, at the Ann Arbor Library, and one of them is this cookbook that is based on fruit recipes, and it's not all raw stuff, there's a lot of baked things, but it's all fruit, it's all fruit, and within the recipes is just this random erotic art. I mean, it's just like this little line art sketchy kind of thing. It is very clearly a book that came out of like 1972 when it was published. It is so wonderfully weird that I'm like, I have to keep this. This is just so wonderful and fascinating and weird. I just have to keep it. So, you know, stuff like that, stuff like that, stuff that I've got for, for whatever kind of bragging rights, just to, you know, like, whenever I have friends over here, I'm just like, hey, you want to see this weird-ass book I've got? <laughs> and since they're my friends, they know that, oh, God, Rowan's got some kind of a weird-ass book. Ah, uh, I've got a, I've got a handful of friends who are not at all, um, who, who are not at all shocked or surprised by anything weird that I find. One of them would be my friend Scott, and then of course, he and I, like, oh god, I've known him, Scott since I was 19, and I knew him for about a year, maybe year and a half, before he and I started dating. Scott and I were dating off and on for five years, so of course, you know somebody that long, oh god, going on 20 years, what the shit? Ugh. So, um, so yeah, you know somebody that long... Obviously, there's very little that can come out of your mouth or your collections of things that will surprise them. Um, next person would probably be my friend Don out in L.A., and he is just, like... <sighs> like, I'm usually, like, around here, I'm the friend who just says weird shit because I have no filter, and that is who I am to my friends here. Uh, but when I was out in L.A., like, Don was that friend to everybody. And he's like, I I've, told, I've told friends of mine here, it's like, no, no, you, you think I'm weird. <laughs> you need to meet Don. And he's, he's, he's something else. He's, <laughs> he really is. He's, he's amazing. And just weird. <laughs> it's wonderful. But, yeah, so I guess that's it. It's like... Oh, God. Yeah, I'm... I think I want toast. I took a... I took a Xanax. I'm still... Because I was still kind of vibrating after putting myself into a bit of an anxiety attack looking for my pill pod from today. And... Um... And, of course, I've been on edge for the last few weeks because it's not... It's not difficult to find out. Like, if you want to... If you really want to get... You know, mess with my head, just tell me something that I know to be a fact, to be false, just tell me it's false for whatever reason, um, 
can make up whatever reason you want for why it, this is wrong somehow. And yeah, it's like I've been fairly open about having my anxiety disorder and uh, and uh, and all of that for uh, for quite some time. And it is, and you know, this this person like they they kept like saying no no I looked at your videos just because I thought it maybe I was going you know maybe I heard it wrong and. It's like, you do it in every video. You say your name with only one syllable. I'm like, no, I don't. I say it audible. I say it with two audible syllables. Rowan. Yeah, Rowan. That's, that's how I say my name. That's how I've always said my name. I'll accept Rowan uh, if somebody says that, but Rowan. That's, that's how I say it. Rowan. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I say my name. Oh, God. This is getting to me. Yeah, I, I know from experience... Do not take another Xanax right now. Wait at least eight hours and all of that shit. But, uh... But, yeah, so, uh... What's coming up this weekend is, um... Actually, yeah, tomorrow's Memorial Day, which means that uh, the bus sucks even more than usual in that it does not run at all in the Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti area. So I'm probably going to finally get around to filming that... Um, video book review of Tears of Sun by Victoria Copus. I also need to do some laundry. I also, um, is there anything else I need to do? For now, is there anything else I need to do tomorrow? Besides all that? I don't know. I was hoping to do a live stream tomorrow, but, um, I don't know. Until I have a better idea, because I know, I know I got one jackhole who unsubbed me because, ah, uh, fuck it by now, it's not like I, but whatever, um, yeah, I made a big flounce comment about it, but, uh, but yeah, like, I, I somehow lost about a dozen subscribers for no apparent reason, because the last week I did... Uh, med vlog live stream. I did a live stream from doing dishes, and I posted two videos featuring my cats. And my cats are like the reason I have half the subscribers I do. So, and the med vlog and the video dish stream. That's that's a fairly average thing that I do. It's not like I said anything offensive or anything, um, unless. Uh, I've, I've certainly thought about, like, maybe I am just incredibly boring, and some people just got wise to it, and a bunch of people got wise to it en masse. And if that's the case, okay, I guess. Um, but yeah, I was really hoping to live stream tomorrow, but I guess I can't now. Um, of course, I also noticed that, um, that yeah, that, like, YouTube's uh, updated their software again, and this seems to... Uh, this seems to mess with a lot of people's sub counts and all of that, so I, um, I did what? I posted a Twitter asking people, like, hey, if you think you have subbed me, uh, please go check again. If, uh, if you did intentionally unsub, maybe I am just indeed very boring and... <laughs> okay, but yeah, I gotta lay back down on the floor because my back is still killing me. Um, Angelo was, a uh, um live streaming last night, and I was up with her for maybe about half of that, along with a bunch of other people, and then what happened was, uh, yeah, I'd mentioned, like, toward the end that I, like, wrenched my back earlier in the day, and it hasn't gotten better, and of course, because the bus sucks extra hard on, um, on the, uh, on the, on the bank holidays and whatnot, uh, around here, I, there were things I had to do today because it was my, like, yesterday and today were, like, my only chances during this, you know, three-day weekend that everybody else loves. I'm like, but I can't do anything on the Monday. Like, not unless somebody wants to come pick me up and go do something somewhere, because, you know, otherwise I am stuck at home. So tomorrow, doing laundry, um, finally shooting that video book review, um, I will pet the kitty. I pet the kitties all goddamn day. Like, part of the reason that my back is in such terrible shape right now is because I came home and 
I went to go take my pills and all of that. And Nigel decided that he really wanted to be on my lap. And I, I'm trying to fight to keep him off of my lap in like those little subtle ways, like leaning all the way forward so that there is no lap for him to sit on. But he was being very persistent. And at some point, I just, I don't know, I was just kind of crying because I hurt so much, but he really wanted to be on my lap. And, okay, I guess that's it. I gotta... Uh, I gotta do shit. Alright, take care. Bats and kisses and all that.